Welcome back to this podcast edition of 12 Days in March. This material was delivered during a series of live lectures at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. In this recording, we'll review the key features of polymyositis and dermatomyositis for the USMLE Step 1 exam. As with all presentations, a PDF of this recording is available at the 12 Days website. Where are we? So now we're back at rheumatology here, and uh, I call this, yesterday was seronegative, so this is seropositive. It's just a brief amalgam of topics. And we'll be covering myositis briefly, because there's not that much to cover for the boards. But the fact of the matter is, what I liked about his uh, presentation, so you have primary myopathy, but it's really this. You know, the majority of people who come in with weakness is because they're hot and bothered, and they got other things going on in their life, and their body, and they're deconditioned, and they're taking prednisone, and all other kinds of th things that cause generalized weakness, but this is just a great approach, and the point is the presentation of myositis fits into the overall presentation of weakness. So, as a resident on the rheumatology rotation, they said, well, these are the four diagnostic features for myositis. Symmetric and proximal weakness, high CK, characteristic EMG, and a muscle biopsy. So there's really clinically only two things, symmetric proximal weakness and a high CK. On the boards, they're never going to give you an EMG, uh, certainly on this, so you don't need to worry about that. And what they will give you, though, is they're going to give you this description, and then they're going to bring it to pathology. This is, when, when they're doing myositis on the boards, it's purely pathology. But, you know, those are the four diagnostic diagnostic criteria that haven't changed in 30 plus years. All right, so just for the both dermato and polymyositis, inflammatory muscle disorders, I just said that, symmetric and proximal muscle weakness, high CK, characteristic EMG. I think I just repeated what I told you. All myopathies have basically necrosis of muscle, right, and mononuclear inflammation. So this question right here is, and again, the way the disease distinguish themselves is location. Where is that inflammatory process uh, taking place? And that's the basic test questions uh, on this topic. Quick edit here. Please note, dermatomyositis is not simply polymyositis with a rash. They are two distinct diseases, and for this topic, the distinguishing pathology represents the key test take-home points. Uh, dermatomyositis is actually a different disease. One is cytotoxic T cells, and the other is humorally mediated, and that's the take home. So polymyositis, cytotoxic T cell mediated, T cell infiltrate scattered within the muscle. And again, when they give no vacuoles, inclusion bodies, they're just distinguishing it from inclusion body myositis. So uh, pathology on polymyositis compared to dermatomyositis on microangiopathy. Antibodies directed at the blood vessel lining. Perivascular leads to ischemic injury. So muscle is damaged, completely different pathology, two completely different diseases that just happen to share a common presentation. So the complications with polymyositis, just be aware of them. I don't really see them going after it, but so with polymyositis, interstitial lung disease, more common um, as opposed to malignancy with dermatomyositis, and anti-JO1, the antibody, does somewhat predict interstitial lung disease with polymyositis. Uh, dermatomyositis, malignancy more commonly seen than with polymyositis, and it, Dermatomyositis can be the presenting uh, symptom of malignancy. So, and dermatomyositis, different pathogenesis, but it also does have the dermatologic involvement. And they give you this stuff. If they want you to be thinking about dermatomyositis, they're giving you the rash. You just have to recognize the description. Heliotrope rash, I thought it meant something. Heliotrope is just this flower. Helio, sun, trope, turn. It turns toward the sun. What a beautiful thing to do. It's this violaceous, dusky, periorbital rash. Interesting. Interestingly, I see them describing this one less than this one. This seems to be the one of choice. Gotrin's papules, so they'll come after you with these elevated violaceous papules on the skin or a photodistribution violaceous rash that isn't really photosensitive. Now, how would you ask that as a question? They really can't, so that's why they like the papules. They don't give you the rash because, oh, that's just too easy for you guys. So then they describe the patient with weakness. They may or may not give a CK. And then the derivative question is going to be purely pathology. And if you think about it from their point of view, they got to write the question. Oh, and they go both ways. You see them in the, in the Q banks both ways. So polymyositis, again, what's the effector cell? CD8 cytotoxic cells spread out amongst the muscle as opposed to capillaritis, the vasculitis really that is dermatomyositis, activated B cells, anti-entothelial antibodies. 
Okay, so this is really, to me, the important distinction of the two. If I'm them and I'm writing questions, I'm going to give you some kind of rash and ask you about what the effect or cell is, or I'm going to give you other bells and whistles and ask you about these cells. That's predominantly what I see them doing with uh, poly and dermatomyositis. The one of the variant is really the antibody. They describe the disease to you and then choose among the autoantibodies, but it's basically this antisynthetase antibody described as histidyl transfer RNA. Um, so that, that's the one, the Joe one. They won't say Joe one. This is how they're going to describe it. And so they'll give you the polymyositis patient, choose from the following five antibodies. That's the one other thing they do with this disorder. Okay? So that's, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. I don't see them getting much more creative than this with the inflammatory myopathies. Um, the key differential is, to me, PMR. PMR will cover high sed rate shoulder and thigh ache, but people with PMR, they come in because of that ache, they, do, they say it's weak. And I'll say, well, you're really weak, and I'll examine them, you're really weak? It's like, no, it just hurts. Um, and those people have normal CKs. So you'll have no problem making the distinction. So that's, that's it. That's the myositis. That's, that's plenty. It's plenty. I promise you. And that concludes this discussion of myositis for the USMLE Step 1 exam. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.